humans are plagued with many fears over such a dominant species. Although it may seem ridiculous from a macro perspective, these fears are not unfounded. The fear of the ocean is an excellent justifiable example. After all, the depths are home to a particular primordial beast that spawned countless movies and horror stories. We're talking about the Great White Shark. Having been on Earth for more than 400 million years, they're considered one of evolution's greatest success stories. A highly adapted apex predator, great white sharks are the largest carnivorous fish in the world. They will often feed and hunt sea lions, seals, and every now and again, humans. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the tragic case of Lewis Archer Boren, a 24-year-old surfer who died after getting bitten by possibly the largest great white shark ever recorded. Welcome to Final Affliction. December 19th, 1981. The sun decided it was too shy for today as it hid behind the gray clouds looming over California. Many were bothered by the overcast weather. There were not many souls that ventured to the coastlines of the beach-clad state. However, enthusiasts and surfers wanted to take advantage of the storm swell caused by the cold, windy weather. Lewis Archer Boren woke up to his alarm. Although most people would sleep off Saturday mornings, the curly-haired adventure seeker had always been fond of the ocean and the ocean welcomed him. He planned on surfing the waves of South Moss Beach with a friend, expecting it to be just another typical day. He quickly got up from bed, ate breakfast, and said goodbye to his parents. He got out into the driveway and strapped his five foot four inch surfboard on the roof rack of his car. The board was colored yellow and had a black border by the edges. Coupled with the surfer's hands stretched wide while lying on the board, the silhouette from under the ocean eerily looked like a seal. However, this was not in Lewis's mind at the time. He beamed like a child as he maneuvered the car out of the residence, unbeknownst to him, this would be his last goodbye. He drove carefully, reaching South Moss Beach still early in the morning before the rendezvous time. The smell of the ocean permeated the air, promising Lewis another excellent surfing session. Since 1899, there have been six fatal attacks from sharks in California, five of them from great white sharks. Although this pattern would easily send chills down anyone's spine and make them warier of entering the waters, fatal attacks from sharks are not really that frequent. Additionally, surfers know precisely the risk they're putting themselves in while practicing their sport. Unfortunately, Lewis never knew he would be the victim of one such brutal attack. Inhaling the sea breeze, the two friends stood patiently on the coastline, peering across the lonely, turbulent sea of South Moss Beach. The two looked out over the greasy, damp kelp beds underneath the gloomy sky. It floated in large, silent rafts colored brown as though serpents were churning beneath them. The waves were blown out on the reef, scaling up to 15 feet high, driven by the cold winds that day. Not a single soul was riding the waves. How could they not take advantage of this, Lewis and his friend thought. The two men pulled on their wetsuits, laughing and talking, catching up as friends would do. They paced along the coastline for a while, stalking the opportunity and getting a general feel of the atmosphere. Lewis and his friend were experienced anyway and didn't share the fear non-surfers felt. The ocean was their home. The two entered the cold waters and paddled out into the open. Floating on the surface, they sat on their boards, waiting for the perfect opportunity. When the winds favored their request, they lay down on their stomachs, pointing their toes towards the surfboard's tail and paralleled their heads to the stringer. They paddled slowly and then quickly, sighting the incoming waves from their periphery. In almost perfect synchronicity, the two young men placed their hands underneath their shoulders, prepping for the exhilarating moment. As the wave warmly welcomed the two surfers, they pushed against their boards, propping their torsos like cobras, and in one fluid motion, Lewis and his friend jumped to their knees. They took a couple of waves in this position, feeling the balance of the board, something they had done a thousand times already, not realizing a sinister force was brewing underneath the surface. They did this over and over until morning faded into the afternoon. Eventually, it was time to go. Afterward, they returned to the parking area and enjoyed their lunch, talking about surfing, life, and family, and other things that young men in their 20s spoke about. At approximately 2 p.m., Lewis and his friends parted ways. 
not realizing this was the last time they'd see each other. As Lewis made his way back into the car, he felt an urge in his chest. He dazedly stood beside his car with a half-hearted stance, thinking it would be such a waste to let the beautiful waves go. He bathed in the deserted scenery and decided to hit the waters one more time. Just another short session and then he'd go home. Or so he thought. Lewis made his way back to the beach, pacing along the coastline and trying to get a feel for things once more. This time, he was truly alone. However, it didn't matter to Lewis, the storm swell did not happen every day and he wanted to take advantage of the great waves. He donned his wetsuit and began paddling into the open waters. The sound of the churning ocean filled the air and a dreading atmosphere washed over Lewis. From underneath him, a fearsome creature watched. The great white shark tilted its head, moving a few meters swiftly under Lewis. The 24-year-old paddled and paddled, unwittingly swimming towards his demise. The fish around the area scrambled in fear, making way for the king. The shark appeared from the shadows, rearing its formidable head into the light. But Lewis did not see the creature. The gloomy weather ensured anything a few meters below him would stay where they were, in the dark, out of sight, and out of mind. It moved like a submarine, precise, deadly, and cautious. The 400 million years of evolution taught it to become almost invisible in the ocean, following the movements of its prey. The great white shark followed Lewis. Still unknown of the danger, Lewis's fate was sealed at that very moment. Placing itself strategically a few feet below the surfboard, the great white shark suddenly went into gear, propelling 2,000 pounds of brute force towards the surface. The water exploded into chaos. The creature's massive jaws laced with five rows of teeth clamped onto Lewis as he paddled away at the water. It was like a train had struck him. The immense force knocked Lewis back from his surfboard, causing him to sink into the depths of the ocean. The single curious bite removed a portion of Lewis's left chest. Before he knew and understood what was happening, he was already dying. Lewis faded into the depths, instantly succumbing to his injury. The water drew its curtains, hiding the horror underneath it. And just like that, the eerie silence of South Moss Beach swept away the tragic fate of Lewis Archer Boren. December 20th, 1981, the following day. Two surfers were walking along Moss Beach when they discovered a surfboard with a portion missing in the matching section about 15 yards away. The two surfers took these parts and handed them over to Salinas Police Department. Eventually, they passed it on to the supervising ranger at the beach. Monday, December 21st, a missing persons report was filed by one of Lewis's friends over concerns that his vehicle had not been moved from the beach since he was last seen. They feared the worst, and they were asking the same question. Where was Lewis? Their answer was swept by the cold currents on the morning of Thursday, December 22nd. Around 11 a.m., Lewis's remains floated in a small cove approximately one kilometer north of Spanish Bay. After being taken to the Paul Mortuary in Pacific Grove, it was identified as Lewis. An autopsy was done. Severe trauma, left chest, shark bite. Lewis was bitten only once. Subsequent investigations of the bite marks revealed something even more sinister. Based on the segment chopped from the surfboard, a marine biologist concluded that the shark's jaws were 18 inches wide. This indicated the shark's length was more or less 23 feet, weighing two tons. They had no doubt it was a great white shark and the largest ever documented. In all metrics, Lewis was no match. According to experts, sharks do not attack people purposely as they don't consider humans part of their food source. In Lewis's case, it was more likely an exploratory bite, and unfortunately, the behemoth shark was never seen again. Humans have remained on top of the food chain for the longest time. Thanks to their highly sophisticated language, coordination, and innovation, humanity has managed to control the environment to their liking, turning their surroundings into what would benefit the population best. However, we must all remember the ocean is one of the few remaining places we have yet to fully explore and those who aren't careful enough are in for a rude awakening. Whether a shark attacks you because of mistaken identity or out of pure hunger, when a shark attacks, there's a high possibility of you meeting your final affliction.